and okay, we're recording now because we want to always talk about the behind the scenes crap that happens. Hey, Chris and Oscar, good to see you guys. Oh my God, like 10 minutes before I'm getting ready to dial in with Jimbo, I go to my computer and there it is, the blue screen of death. And I'm like, ah, what do I do? So luckily I was able to reboot and seven minutes late, that's not too bad, right? <laughs> That's not bad. So I'm going to go ahead and share this out to the um, GSD Video Challenge Facebook page. And I want to welcome you guys here. And Jimbo, thank you so much. I'm excited to interview you. I met you, gosh, almost a year ago, I guess, in, in a Facebook group. And that was the, um, the videos, videos for millions. And Correct. Yeah, and that was a really great program, and I gotta admit, I didn't finish it. <laughs> you and a lot of other people. <laughs> you know, you know, oops, let me mute myself on my, okay, so everybody, if you, type a number one down below, if you have bought a program, any program, and you didn't complete it, because uh, I bet you there's lots of us out there, right, that, that do that and hi patty good to see you we got patty oscar and chris on the webinar and then also we're streaming live to the facebook page this is exciting for me this is my first time like doing a pre-programmed one where i sent a link out to my list so i was like okay i'm gonna try it and see how it goes so i sent the link out to my list and then i posted it on my facebook page in different groups and in our gsd video challenge group so it's going to be interesting to see how this all goes. And I am excited today to have with us Jimbo Marshall of Hell Yeah Programs. He's an amazing guy, and I'm excited to interview him because he's going to tell us the differences of doing like live videos and doing pre-recorded videos. And he does both, and he does them both very well and very effectively. Because don't we want to spend our time being effective? Yes, right? So that's what we're going to discuss today. And first, I want to um, have Jim tell us like how he got started. You know, how you got started doing this, and and then what got you to what you're doing now. Yeah. So thank you for starters for having me on the show. So thrilled to be here. And hello to everyone. And I hope this uh, brings you. And if you don't, if it doesn't, complain to the hostess. Um, <laughs> so I've been a video producer for about. Uh, gosh, going on now like 23 years, and it's really all I've ever known. Um, I, I just wasn't really good at other stuff at school, but I could tell stories, and I just saw things the way they should happen. And as a director producer, I've really grown in the sense that, uh, volume makes you better in this kind of thing. So if you're out there and you're a coach, uh, you're a service provider of something, um, <clears throat> the advice I always give to my clients is, you know, you'll hear a lot of talk out there about, you know, find your niche and, and that's all great. But I say, if you're just starting out, <clears throat> your niche has a credit card that will run and that can pay you. And here's why I say that volume will teach you to be a better coach you know it, it's great that you can coach somebody in your niche uh, that's compatible with you but what you really learn about yourself as a service professional is when you're dealing with lots of people that maybe not may not be your ideal clients and they will make you stronger because I know if you're watching this and you're following Linda you're of uh, integrity and you do what you do because it's your mission, you, you have a calling, etc. And you're on a mission to change the world, to help people, to get them to, you know, pass being stuck into the next whatever, right? And <clears throat> the people that will make you better won't be the easy ones to coach. So that, that's my little first tip right out there off the bat. I got into it, like I said, right in college. I I was a, a, a film major and a minor in drama. I loved the theater, I love film, and I love making videos. And I, <clears throat> my, my history really started around 2005 where I started working for an infomercial company and I produced 
slash edited 500 infomercials. And really, th these were infomercials that were in the medical community. They were uh, for like plastic surgeons, cosmetic dentistry, dental implants, uh, natural uh, hormone replacement therapies. It was for service pay, uh, service pay medical doctors or dentists that needed to advertise. And why this experience, I didn't really realize at the time, I was just happy to have a job <clears throat> working full-time in production. I also taught school for uh, eight years in Chula Vista, as a matter of fact, started at Castle Park Elementary um, in, in Chula Vista, California, third grade. Um, wait, wait a I minute. I went on to this infomercial company. Wait, yeah. hold, hold the horses. Did you know that yeah. I graduated from Castle Park? That's why I'm saying this, yeah. That's so I, awesome. Are you making I, this up? I'm a good stalker. <laughs> no, Castle Park Elementary. I taught third grade there for three years. Awesome. Um, Okay, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, the infomercial experience was so valuable because the great thing about an infomercial is you put it on TV, let's say on a Tuesday night. By Wednesday morning, if the phone is at the show, so it's so direct response that it gave me just this wonderful knowledge about like, why would one doctor be successful and the next doctor wouldn't be? right what what were the common characteristics in successful shows and, and it really turned out linda that it came down to the doctor just being a nice person him or her just being friendly and not trying to use doctor language and try to appear all smart it turns out that you know i remember having a, a an argument or a discussion we shall say with a doctor and he said jimbo you know you cut out that whole part about me going to harvard and I was like, yeah, nobody really cares. Uh, I said, you know, the truth is nobody goes into a doctor's office and is like, wait a minute, where do you go to school? If the doctor comes in wearing a white coat and is going to pay attention to you, you're pretty much good to go as long as they're nice. You just want them to listen. And so it was a valuable experience. And then that led into, I got picked up by the Discovery Channel and they sent me to like South Africa where I'm in a shark tank shooting, you know, great white sharks. And then I'm on safari and then I'm in Nelson Mandela's house and the apartheid museum. And uh, that went really well. So they sent me to China and Italy and Greece and uh, the Grand Canyon here in the States. And here's another little lesson. When they hired me, they were like, all right, you're gonna go follow this group. You're going to be out, you know, on, on this trip for about 14 days. You know, here's the kind of shots we want. And then, you know, put them on a hard drive, get them organized so we can, you know, do something with you when you get home. Well, I thought, hey, I'm in South Africa. Sometimes we would take a day trip just to get to the next location. I'm in the back of the bus. I've got a, a, a MacBook laptop. I'm going to just edit stuff as quickly and as cool as I can, what I think would be attractive to watch. And as soon as I sent back the first uh, video, and they weren't paying me for this, they were like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. This is exactly what, I, what we want. And that led me into becoming that, they were like, well, can you go to China and do this? And I was like, absolutely. So, you know, sometimes in business, you go a little bit extra to show what you can do at times. And it really paid off dividends for me. Um, and then. This is kind of a funny story. Uh, there's a woman out there named JJ Virgin, and she's a pretty big deal. She's got, you know, she's had her own TV show. She's New York Times bestseller, um, and she's super smart. And she was actually dating me at the infomercial company. And when she heard I wasn't there anymore, she called me right away and said, hey, will you come shoot videos with me? And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> you know, this is what I do. And she was in a mastermind with Lisa Sasevich under Allie Brown. <clears throat> and she introduced me to Lisa Sasevich. So in 2009, I find myself at Big Mission, Big Sales, Big Life in San Diego. Um, and, and I was shooting this event and I've never, I mean, it was so foreign to me, but all of the concepts were so like enticing. And it was like this different kind of positive psychology that I was like, I gotta get more of that. And that got me into the coaching industry. And then from there, 
Uh, I hired a coach because uh, a good coach has a coach. Um, you can't see the forest from the trees. You really can't. <laughs> That's the truth. And um, my coach at the time was like, you need to make a web show. And, and the business was going pretty good. You know, I was doing it on my own. And, you know, truth be told, I'm much more of a creative than a, a sales type. And so I would get really engrossed. Some project and a project, and I'd be like, "Oh shit, I gotta go sell some more stuff, <laughs> right? I gotta, I gotta, gotta have money coming in." And so uh, my coach said, "You know, uh, make a web show." I was like, "I don't know if I make a web show, you know, what if people don't like it?" And she was like, "That's not the point. You, you've got to, you know, keep moving forward and, and keep taking chances. You really are a risk taker at heart, and and I know what you're capable of." And I grew up on Saturday Night Live. I still love. The, the skit format. I love skit comedy. And uh, so I created this show called Can I Get a Transformation? And I, I made up all these wacky characters where it was like, I made up a, a guy named Blades Greystone. And everybody had costumes and everything and wigs and all that kind of good stuff. And his whole philosophy was, he's a musical transformational agent from the 70s. And he believed that, you know, the classic rock songs could solve all of your problems. And uh, so I made this show and Suzanne Evans saw it and she was like, you are funny. Let's do something together. So I did a project for her and we just got along so well um, that we formed Hell Yeah Studios together. And I'm now the creative director. We have four editors that work uh, there with me and get all of the post-production work done. And, uh, you know, really have been privy to shoot with Ali Brown and David Nagel. And, you know, like I said, Lisa Sasevich had been a client for seven years um, or eight years now. And um, really, you know, the, the biggest benefit out of all of that is being able to serve entrepreneurs that you know, you guys have probably never heard of, but are in their own little pockets in the world, doing good, making the world a better place, spreading their message, kind of thing. And I shoot about two hundred people a year out of the studio uh, here in South Carolina. So that's the long version of it. <laughs> yeah, let's make sure we say shoot video of them, yeah. not shoot, shoot them. Video, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Thanks and you, it, yeah. And you know, that's a great point that you just made. So I keep hearing this term micro celebrity, micro celebrity lately, because, you know, there's 7 billion people on earth. We don't have to be the celebrity that everybody knows. We just need to be the celebrity that our people know that are buying from us. Right. That's such a good point because not everybody's going to be your type anyways. Right. Yeah. If you want to, Hold your audience, you know, one at a time, right? And 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 you keep at it, and it'll get there. Sure. Yeah, yeah, and definitely, I love your story. How you know uh, you started off, you're doing just something you really loved, and then and then next thing you know, which probably was a little bit more than like next thing you knew, but <laughs> you know, what did they say? It it took it only thirty years yeah. to to become an overnight success, right? <laughs> Become an yeah. <laughs> so true. Yeah. So that's yeah. awesome, yeah. though, the being able to. Power. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> being able to turn that passion into you know your way of you know making your income, and then because the thing is that if you're doing something you're really really passionate about, and you're gonna want to keep doing it day and night. It's not like I'm punching in at the clock and yeah. oh god, I got to get to work today, and then punching out. I remember I had oh gosh. I've had 46 jobs in my life, so I've <laughs> experienced a lot of punching clocks. Um, but there was this one job that I literally had to punch yeah. the clock, you know, and it started at 7 a.m. and I would get to work yeah. and I would not, I would get there early, but I wouldn't punch in until 7. And I was like, 7 clock. And then at 7.15, I was looking <laughs> at the clock like, when is our break? <laughs> you know? And then I punch, you know, punch out for lunch, punch back in for lunch and then I just could not wait until five o'clock or four o'clock so I could get the hell out of there and get to doing stuff I actually like doing. Yeah, so exactly. you're awesome to be able to do this. Let's see what well, first Oscar asks, will the webinar be available for later viewing? Yes, Oscar, it will. It'll be on the GSD video challenge group and it's actually in there right now. We're streaming live in there. So it will be, I'll keep it up there. So thanks for asking. Um, but that is really awesome that you're you know, doing what you truly love doing. And I know you wanted to share with us today some of the hacks. Like you, see if I got this right. I got a couple of them. One was that 
I wrote this, this is what I got from it, was coach those who will make you better. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> it's, it's my whole idea. And, and listen, I, I, I'm not here to like talk, you know, bad about any kind of coaching philosophy or, or you know, mentorship or anything like that, because I believe in it. But here's what happened with me. We formed Hell Yes Studios in 2012. We were on stage at a Pamela Brunner's event. It was the first time Suzanne and I had ever been on stage together. And this is how the studio really funds itself. I mean, you joined one of our my times, but our meat and potatoes is really from live speaking. It's, it's where we really do the, the best. We're at this event. I'm on stage with her. We go to make the offer. And there's a rush to the back of the room. And I just wanted to like hit her and go, it's working. <laughs> but here's, and I was so excited because, I mean, like we literally did not have a studio built. <laughs> we're, we're basically selling this with the idea, if this works, here's what we're gonna do. And we still recommend that kind of an idea to, to entrepreneurs. It's like, you know, sell the program and then build it as you go and you'll find out where it needs to be tweaked along the way <clears throat> so we build the studio that, that's fine i shot about 87 88 people from july until december in that year 2012 and i gotta tell you i would show up to work on a, a vip day and i'd have like four to five people coming in to shoot videos with me we stack them and you know plunk them or whatever chunk them that way. And I wouldn't, I mean, I've had pre-production calls with these people and I've made sure their scripts are good because that's really part of the process that makes it work. But I didn't really know who they are. And in the beginning, you know, when you're doing something, especially that you love, you're just excited. You don't take into account like, oh, okay, this person is really not ready to be on camera but yet they're here. And how do I handle that? How do I get them to be the best they can be that day, given the fact that they don't really know me either. They don't, they're not like loving me to the point of like, oh my gosh, I trust this guy with everything. And it really taught me to how to be such a good communicator and to be direct and assertive in a kind and loving and uplifting way. And, and sometimes I always, I always warn my clients, I go, this may come with inappropriate jokes. Don't be offended, just go with it. Let's have a good time and know that my goal by the end of our session today is that we've done the best videos that we could get out of you in this time period. And also know that you, nobody is born being camera ready. You don't come out of the womb going, all right, I'm ready to perform. If you're a health coach or a sales coach or an energy healer or whatever it is you do, you probably spent your entire life becoming good at that. You're an expert in that. The problem is just because you're an expert in that doesn't mean you're an expert in selling it or performing it. And in this day and age, you know, you could have a guy with 20 years of experience and somebody comes along with two years of experience but they just have the personality and the pizzazz for it and they're gonna get the job every time I'm not saying that's fair but it happens because we we buy from people because we're attracted to them you know what I mean and I still have people to this day and we we Suzanne and I speak anywhere from nine to fifteen times a year depending on where we are strategically you know trying to get speaking gigs um, and I'll still have, I mean, I literally had a person a month ago come into the studio and he starts talking about Suzanne, this and that. And when she was on stage, she was just so this. And I was like, dude, I was there too. And he's like, oh, and I was like, I get it. I'm not the main attraction when we're on stage. She is a really good performer. And I always make the joke of like, man, you're lucky I'm really good at this <laughs> because you just bought off of an emotion and, it, and people really do buy off of an emotion and that's okay it's not a knock on that but you have to be aware that that's what's happening if you go to these you know events which we do i do you know all year long 
the idea for the host or hostess is to create an energy in the room and you're basically selling possibility at that point. You're selling here's what's possible should you go along with my program and continue to work with me. And you know, that's the way we teach people how to do it. Um, and it, because it works and you know, when you're dealing with somebody of integrity, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I've had people come in and they, they really don't want to do the videos and I just talk them out of the tree, so to speak and go, just trust me, we got this. If you listen to what I say and you'll execute the way I'm telling you to, and I'll do a, a line read when I, you know, have to, um, you'll be fine. You know what I mean? And these videos will work when they're presented to the right person, you know? Yeah, you know, that's uh, interesting. I, I, I love all that. And it's, you know, staying in integrity is extremely important because one thing you said here was, um, yeah, yeah, you know, because people, you said people will buy when they're attracted to you. And so I want to kind of touch on that a little bit. And it's not attracted by your looks. Yeah. It's attracted by who you are because if you're being fully authentic and you are being you, you're going to attract the people who want to be around you. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what you're wearing. It doesn't matter what your hair looks like, what kind of hats you're wearing. It doesn't matter because if you wear crazy hats, people who like crazy hats or, 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 and who are scared to wear them are going to be like, Oh my God, I just love her because she wears crazy hats and I'm scared to wear them. Like she's got balls, you know? Right. It's like, yeah, exactly. Hey, so right about I love your backyard. That's beautiful. Are those roses? <laughs> Thank you. I, I, here's what our office, but here's the truth. When it rains in South Carolina, our internet is like, I don't know what to do. It's raining. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to risk that. Um, so the sun is now tracking me. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> it's tracking you. That's fun. Do, 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 do. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, oh, here was another one. You said, um, uh, cause you know, the, the movie, I can't remember the name of the movie. I'm sure you'll remember, you know, build it and they will come. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's but that's, not, dreams. Yeah. yeah, but that is not the case with businesses because you mm -hmm. can build it and nobody will come. So you have to do exactly what you guys did, right? You go ahead and you say, hey, hey, you know what? We have this really great idea. Let's go share from the rooftops and see yeah. if anybody agrees. And if yeah. they agree, then boom. Yeah. They're it's, gonna buy it. Yeah, you could basically say, promote it, then build it promote it some more and then they will come. <laughs> yeah. You have to, you know, I, I will tell my clients all the time, your job in, in assuming you're a, a service provider of some sort, your number one job is to be visible. And, and that's basically you go to events, mm -hmm. you're networking both local and, you know, nationally, you're making videos and you're showing up on Facebook book with a, str a strategic plan uh, uh, to get yourself out there because if you don't somebody else is yeah and you I mean good, I make yeah. no bones about it. people out there that do what I do right? right I just lead with my personality you know and I know why that's important because I've seen the proof in my own life. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's a good point because yeah, your personality, you and I can do exactly the same thing, exactly the same way and get exactly the same results, but your personality is different than mine. And that's why I don't see it as competition yeah. because like if I'm out there and you're out there, if you and I are on the stage together, somebody's going to be like, Oh my God, I really love Linda. And somebody's going to be, I really love Jimbo. I'm going with Jimbo. I'm going with Linda. I mean, what's the big deal? I mean, there's more, there's 7 billion people on earth. I can't possibly handle all of them as a client. <laughs> Nor would you want to. No, no, all those different personalities. Well, I got to tell you though, yeah. um, it's interesting because like that very first hack was, you know, coach those who will make you better. Um, I've been in the comfort zone of like, I don't want to say comfort zone, but it's like, I don't want to deal with people I don't want to be around. So it's kind of interesting you said yeah. that, and it's like, thanks for reminding me, you know? <laughs> yeah, listen, there's, there's some days, there's, there's not many, thankfully, but there's some days in the studio where I'm like, how did I end up here? <laughs> this, this feels horrible. 
But I'm there to serve, right? I'm there to, yeah. to be the director, their producer. That's my job. I can't take it personally if they're not vibing with me or not. And I got to tell you, it always makes me better because there's always some kind of trick I'm pulling out of my communication toolbox that made them get to that next level where I'm like, all right, you taught me something. I don't have to tell them. I just know that now I have one more thing that I can offer the next person. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I want to share something right now because um, right now, you know, Jimbo is a professional videographer, storyteller, all these different things, right? He's amazing. And if you notice, he's switching around his room. And I want to point this out because he's still here doing this with me, even though he doesn't like have a professional thing set up, you know, he's got a sweatshirt on. So for you, those of you who are too scared to put yourself out there because your hair is not done right, your makeup isn't done right, you're not wearing the right clothing, you don't have the, be the right backdrop, doesn't matter. I got these little bins over here, you know? It really doesn't. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get out of the sun because it's getting a little hot. I'll give you a little <laughs> We'll tour of the place. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and there was another thing you said too, uh, was to relax. And it's like you, you help your clients relax, but also do you have any, because uh, I've heard of different techniques that people do. I'm, uh, fortunately, I've, been, I've done so many videos now. I've done well over 3,000 videos. I've done so many that I'm almost as comfortable in front of the camera as I am not. And, but it took me a while to get there, of course. And, yeah. Do you have any um, techniques that you have your clients do? Like I've heard of some people doing some really crazy stuff before they go on air to calm themselves. Do you have any techniques for our viewers here? Yeah. So my process works like this. And, and regardless, you know, if you're listening and, and watching and you want to hire a, a, a video production company to do your videos, um, here's, here's what's really important. And I'll circle back to what I tell my clients that come in because it's part of the process. Um, one thing they have to, the production company or the video producer director has to understand what your goals are. They have to understand your industry. And again, I'm talking specifically about service providers and because here's here's what happened and this is from experience when i was living in southern california i also had a wedding video production company for about 15 years and i've shot over 600 weddings and yeah i know believe me wedding cake i get it <laughs> <laughs> and, I, I did 600 uh, weddings and i gained 600 pounds <laughs> yeah exactly My 600 pound wedding life yeah um, so what I loved about the wedding business is one, it, it taught me, it taught me basic selling, right? I mean, I had to sell myself to potential uh, brides, clients, etc. cetera. Um, it also taught me how to be a great shooter because, and I'm talking about with a camera, a shooter, because when the, when the bride is walking down the aisle, there's no opportunity to go cut, hold on. <laughs> uh, Tracy, could you go back to that part and just walk again? I want to make sure we get this shot right. <laughs> right. right. So things right. Um, but at that time, in this, you know, early 2000s, I was doing anything and everything to make money with that equipment. So I was shooting a wedding on the weekend and I would show up and shoot court deposition on a Tuesday. On a Saturday morning, I would go shoot, uh, you know, uh, a christening at a Catholic church. And then I would go, uh, at, you know, if I wasn't shoot a wedding, I'd be at a, a six-year-old birthday party shooting that. So I was doing everything. It was really the game of hustle, right? I mean, you, you got to have hustle if you're going to be an entrepreneur. Um, so I was doing everything I could to make a living with a camera. And there's a lot of people out there doing that, and that's great. <clears throat> the, the problem is, at that time, I didn't really have the directing skills and really the confidence to direct someone and go, hey, Linda, <clears throat> I like what you're doing here, but on this line, we're really falling short. And I need you to pick it up. I need you to smile. 
it felt very uncomfortable in the beginning because you don't want to like personally attack somebody. So that's one thing. If you're calling a local company, they may have all the technical skills, but they don't have the communication nor the marketing knowledge to get you where you want to go. They're basically going to be like, yeah, let's shoot it. The other thing that I'm really big on is a teleprompter. Mm -hmm. Every comes into the studio must have a script and here's why think about this analogy you're going to do your your website you take some notes on a cocktail napkin out to dinner you would never just hand that to a web designer and go all right put that up it'll be fine oh you wouldn't you would go through an editing (laughs) process right you would really formulate the words and make sure that it's it's targeted right and that's what a teleprompter can do because once we have the script good now the script can live on the teleprompter. Now we're, we can focus on the performance and you don't have to focus on the material as much. You're really concentrating on, you know, talking and smiling and using expression and speeding up and slowing down when it needs to be slow. So that's part of it right there. Now, <clears throat> backing up on the pre-production process, when I have a client, they all go through a, a pretty rigorous pre-production process and that's for a reason we don't want to get to the shoot and just start going all right what do we got we want to do all of that pre-planning because the time is when you have the makeup on when you're looking your best the lights are brighter right and you you don't want to waste that time or energy so if i i will flat out ask every client do you have any apprehensions about being on camera have you done it before what's your experience so that i get to know them If I feel I've got a little bit of a nervous Nelly on my hands, what I'll do is I'll go, here's your homework. Well, I'll have them read the script over once we're on the phone. So that way we are basically, it's basically like, Hey, you're in front of the camera. Let's talk this out and let me hear it. Make sure it makes sense. If I know they're anxious, this is actually the best, best exercise you can do. You wake up every day and film a video Don't worry, you're not going to put it out on the web or anything. You don't have to do your hair, your makeup, anything like that. But you make a two-minute video every day where you're just talking and smiling. It doesn't even have to make sense. After two weeks of this, you'll be like, all right, I'm over it. Mm -hmm. There is no – and and you know this because I believe you're also a musician. Do you play the bass? Yes, I do, yes. So you've got a little bit of an unfair advantage because you're already used to the limelight, so to speak, right? Performing. But, you know, again, like I mentioned earlier, we aren't born camera ready and a born performer. It takes practice. You just have to do it. It's, it's a lot like riding a bike. You could read about riding a bike. You could study it all you want. But until you ride a bike, there's no substitute. You, That's it, for it, sure, Yeah. And, and, and I could also say, hey, look, I could teach you how to ride a bike today. I don't recommend that you ride the Tour de France tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you've got to build yourself up for this and know that you will become a better performer over time. But it just takes doing it. That's a good point. And thinking of it as, because when you go on camera, especially you're going live, a lot of the you know, people in the group are going live. Some are doing some pre-recorded, but when you go live, you know, you are on camera, you're performing. And so have fun with it. You know, like pretend like you're in front of a good audience of people who want to hear what you have to say, because those are yeah. the ones who are going to be watching your videos. And here's so, another yeah. I have that I give everybody. <laughs> and, it, and it starts a little harsh. I say, you will be judged. <gasps> you will be judged. There's no doubt about it. The people that are watching are judging you and I. It's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It's really indifferent. You go to the grocery store. You're in the checkout line. You will judge the person that's taking your money for a brief moment in time. Here's the point. If you know you're going to be judged and you know there's no way around that and you know that you can't please everybody Mm -hmm. right now here's what you can do you can go all right if i know i'm going to be judged why don't i just give them the version of myself that i would want them to judge right (laughs) i mean it's like 
let me at least put the version I want rather than trying to figure out like, oh, what do you think they would want? You, you'll you never know. <laughs> Just go with what you like. And it yeah. Will be, listen. Well, yeah. I will say like, as, as weird, as out there, as quiet, as subdued, as obnoxious as anyone is, there's a tribe waiting for you. <laughs> That's for sure. I mean, think about... Yeah, there's so many people that are extremely, just like extremely out there, you know, crazy out there. And, <laughs> and some of them like, I just love them. I think they're amazing. You know, I find them more interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun to follow them, right? Okay, so let's see. Here's uh, one thing you said um, that I thought I thought it was really, really good. This is very important because this is where I have totally fallen short. Um, I actually hired a videographer twice, two different videographers to do some work with me. And I got there and the first question that wasn't asked, and I, and I realized later how important this was, was from, I need to know what my goals are. Yeah. Because you can ask me, what are your goals? And I can say, you know, this or that. And, and whatever I say is what you're going to think it is because you don't know. So you're going to, so I, it's so important before we go in and we do this kind of video, like, like say we wanted to hire Jimbo, for example, before we go in and hire Jimbo, we want to make sure we're really, truly clear on what we want, what our message is, what are our goals, what, what do we want to accomplish with this video? Because otherwise you're just going to throw money down the drain. And you know, that's, that's kind of silly, right? I do that when I go to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Vegas well, for me, that's another thing I talk to my clients about. I, I will say, most of the time it should be clear, especially with the pre-production process, because my, when you do hire me, you get this packet. I mean, it's not intimidating to read or anything, but it's this idea of like, what would make this whole process easier? And one of the sections in there is talking about the goals of each video. And the idea is this, <clears throat> most of the time when somebody works with me, they've, they've purchased a three video package. So I will say, if we did each of these video correctly, what would the end user do after they're done watching that video? And that question alone will really help you. If, if we did this video perfectly, what action would the end user take when they're done watching this video? And that makes it very obvious at that point. That's awesome. And that's a really great question for us to answer every time we go live too, yeah. right? What do I want? Because we goal? Yeah, because we want to go live. We want to go at least somewhat prepared. You know, I got to admit, the 3,000 videos I've done, I think maybe five of them have been prepared. You know, <laughs> but... I don't take that kind of an attitude any day. You, you know, <laughs> imperfect action that will get you somewhere. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Well, it's got me a lot of Facebook friends. So, you know, those are people that are following me because they've liked my personality and, yeah. you know, which, which I think is awesome. I mean, for me, that's, that's really cool. And nobody expects perfect, right? I mean, who's perfect? Mm -hmm. And the what? thing is, anybody who expects perfect is not my tribe. No. Because, no. yeah, <laughs> it's unreal. It's unrealistic. It's un unrealistic. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I used to be like that. I used to be a perfectionist and I used to expect perfection, but you know, I got over that. <laughs> I, go. it's I will still tell every client I've never made a perfect video. I could watch anything that I've done where I'm in front of the camera or any one of, uh, of a client and go, I would tweak that word. I would change that. I mean, this is six months later, but in the big picture, it makes no difference. You know, and a lot of times, we have a system, I have a system when I'm shooting with somebody and we generally do a video like this. We will go, all right, we've got the script on the teleprompter. We'll do what I call a dry run, meaning just read it out loud, kind of get some of the wiggles out, right? Get yourself warmed up. And I'm going to be directing you over the top and I'm going to say things like smile more or I'll just start making inappropriate jokes to get people to loosen up. Right. And then we, we record it once and then we record it again. And generally by that third time, we've got it good to the point where we can't make it any better in the sense that we could ever measure a conversion difference, right? I mean, at some point, either people are going to like you and do what you ask at the end of the video with the call to action, we've gotta have that, or they won't. Right. And we, we could do it 15 times and it would never convert any differently, if that makes sense. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's true. Because as, as long as you're, like I said, being authentic and have your personality in there, that's what people are, like you said, the emotions, right? People are buying off of emotions. So if you can get an emotion out of them, if you're selling a product that is like something that gets them upbeat and stuff, you want to make sure you're upbeat. You want to be like, oh, hey, today we got this awesome product, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have, and, I, and I hate saying things that I always say, but I always say this, no one buys depression. So even if I've got like, let's say a divorce uh, coach, right? And yeah. she deals with women or men post-divorce and that's a heavy time, no doubt about it. Been mm -hmm. there, done that. <laughs> but <clears throat> nobody is going to be like, <laughs> right, got the t-shirt, still paying for the t-shirt. Um, <laughs> your job as that divorce coach is to represent hope. You're not responsible for their situation. So you feeling sorry for them or treating this like it's the end of the world will not help them and it will not help your bank account. You've got to represent hope and what it means to live post-divorce, right? And yeah. the opportunities that you've been given. So that's a great, great point. Yeah, I think it's really important. I mean, to you know, make sure that you're putting your personality in there, the personality that you want to be while you're working with them. Also, it's important, and I know I just um, I just watched a, a master class. Um, I'll, I'll mention somebody else's name if that's okay with you. <laughs> you know, Ma yeah, Molly Mahoney. Molly Mahoney. She's really awesome. I think she might be watching right now. As a matter of fact, but I just watched her master class, and one thing that um, I thought was really cool that she mentions is to you know know your twenty things about yourself that are awesome, and showcase those like. Show people how awesome you are. You know why? Because yeah. this is your TV show. Think of this as your own TV show. You have an opportunity to show people your products, your services, in a way without showing them your products and services. You don't want to shove things down people's throat, right? So it's like it's about um, using this as your commercial without being a commercial. Yeah, I you love know? that. And, yeah. And another thing I will add to that. Uh oh, I lost you. Something something happened with your microphone or something when you just moved it. Uh oh. There, that's uh -oh. better. There we go. Okay. So one of the things that Lisa talks about is this concept of committed but not attached. And it fits right into this. The way I interpret this is like I'm committed to helping you. I'm not attached if you say yes or no. I can't be. That would be crazy. <laughs> right? But I'm committed to giving you the information so that you can move forward. I'm not attached to how you move forward. Right? Like mm -hmm. you were saying, you can't be so salty that it's just like, okay, we get it. Right? You do have to be assertive. You do have to learn to ask for the sale, but you can't be attached to the outcome. Right? Otherwise, you're every person you ask you've got all of this energy just into for no apparent reason because <laughs> it won't make a difference <laughs> right you can't be concerned enough that they will say yes <laughs> That's yeah for sure. and I guess that goes along with like desperation right because when people are, are in desperation they seem to get emotionally yeah. attached to the no and then they take it personally yeah. and and it has nothing to do with yeah. you it has nothing to do because you think about so like put yourself in the situation like reverse the situation if someone were coming at you and trying to sell you stuff and like throw this stuff in your face like pay me for this pay you're going to get a little turned off so put yourself in that position and then if you say no to them and their feelings get hurt from it you know that's on them you're saying no for a reason your no is whatever your reason is and that's all it is and what do you think of this one yeah. Now, what do you think of this one? I've heard this saying a lot, and I don't agree with it. But I'm just wondering what you think. Um, no means okay. not. No means not yet. What do you think about that? Uh, well, I, I would have to follow it up with, I know that the money is always in the follow up, and I'll give you a great example. I was sponsoring okay. uh, Jeff Walker's event last year, and. Um, I, I met a guy there that I, I knew was a great uh, candidate for our services, and he, he 
teaches on cybersecurity and he was telling me about what he's trying to accomplish. And I was like, dude, I got this. I mean, I got this. So literally from the beginning of October until I was actually in my, in my car going to my girlfriend's house over Christmas, I followed up with this guy. And he said yes on the way. And this was a $20,000 package, $21,000 package. Wow. So I would say no means not yet. In some cases, you have to use your judgment, right? If you know that's not a good fit and they've said no, move on. But until you get a no, you got to keep after it. And, and, and that's one of the hardest things to do, I think, as an entrepreneur. Because yeah. I think most of us are, you know, just reactively are like, all right, they're not returning my calls. They're not returning my emails. I'll move on. But interestingly enough, and, and, you know, I told that little story, that's not the first, and I know it won't be the last time that that happens, where it's the follow-up and follow-up. And, you know, we're, we're, we have our big event, uh, Be the Change. It's happening next week in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I would love anybody that's listening to come as my guest. All you got to do is direct message me and I'll make sure you get a complimentary ticket. It's a great event. That's um, awesome. But the interesting thing is we call people relentlessly. And when I say relentlessly, Linda, <laughs> I mean relentlessly. <laughs> Obnoxious guests, but we do that because time after time, I'll get on the phone with somebody and they'll be like, I'm so thankful you are following up. And it's like literally the 18th call I've left, right? And, and it's just insane. And they say yes. And, and months later, their life has changed because they've joined one of our programs. They've done something to better their life. They've altered their course. And it really is one of the biggest lessons I've learned of being an entrepreneur and, and working for one of the top ones in this industry money's in the follow-up <laughs> you cannot be deterred yeah and you know that's a, a great point because i've had um you know people that will call me and call me leaving messages and and that's okay i'm like okay they keep calling and i just thought it's not a good time right now or whatever yeah. and then yeah. if when they finally get a hold of me i'll be like you know now is not a good time but i know in two months things are going to be different please call me back in two months and then they do and then that's when i'm ready to buy yeah, yeah, exactly. So it, it's a hard lesson. It's demoralizing at times for the for the entrepreneur, but it's it's just part of the journey. Well, and a, a good point on that too, Jimbo, is that um, if you aren't relentlessly calling them, tracking them down, somebody else is going to be doing it. Of course, no you know? doubt about it. No doubt about it. Yeah, so that's a good good rule to follow. So let's see. Do you want to talk about? Um, also, you said you know be nice and friendly. Of course, talk. <laughs> but um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about you know live videos versus pre-recorded videos, and I know you do both. And so, what's your thought on when? When do you think? I guess I want to use the I want to use the uh, question this way. When do you think it's like mandatory? you do a pre-recorded video? Yeah, like, that's a great question. And, and here's my answer to that. Every entrepreneur, again, service provider type uh, entrepreneurs, should have uh, a minimum of probably three to five professional videos on their site that live on there all day long. The first would be an opt-in video. That's basically the video that you would see on a landing page, on a home page, and it's basically an invitation to get a free gift in return for their name and email address. That starts you on the road to marketing to them, and it gives you permission to send them other things. That video should be somewhere around a minute and a half to two minutes. It's three components in every great marketing script. Number one, you identify the problem. Number two, you let them know how you solve the problem. And number three, you tell them what to do next, right? So a great opt-in video for me, for example, obviously it would be professional. I'd be, you know, lit perfectly and all that kind of stuff. But it might be something like, hey, Jimbo Marshall here, and welcome to Hell Yeah Studios. You know, you found me because you're struggling 
to shoot your own videos. And trust me, I get it. It's not easy. A lot of people just say, you know, just make these videos and put them up there. Well, it's not always that easy. And you probably know that. You probably have expensive equipment that you paid too much money for that's sitting in the closet. And you've tried 17 times and you're still not happy with it. Listen, as an experienced video producer with over 20 years in my back pocket, I know how to handle this. Listen, I've worked for some of the top name entrepreneurs, Suzanne Evans, Lisa Sasevich, uh, you name it, I've probably done it, okay? And I want to get you started right away. I want you to enter your name and email in these boxes below. You're going to get my free starter gift. And really, this gift is going to tell you about all of the equipment you don't need to get started today. So enter your name and email, and I'll see you on the other side. Um, um, have you done that one before? Oh, my God. <laughs> thousands of times. <laughs> yeah, I <was> <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> well, I have a que I have a question for you on that. A little follow up question. Um, yeah. What do you believe? What's your thoughts on website versus landing page? Because what I've heard, what I'm hearing in the market right now, is that websites are going to the wayside and landing pages is where it's at. What's your thought on that? I love both. I, I because here's here's really if you're in a strategic situation, you'll have a main site that that uh, has basically all of you on there. And then you may have a landing page for a specific launch. So for example, we do you know Video for Millions, as you mentioned that you were in the course last year. That really represents a landing page for that specific problem, right? But if you wanted to say, learn about business coaching, you could search Suzanne Evans and get her information there and what she could offer. I think there's a place for both. I think, you know, if you're, if you're using a sophisticated CRM management software like an Infusionsoft or something that has the ability to segment a list, then it's really great. It, listen, if you're just starting out, it's easier to do a landing page with a simple video and an opt-in, and that's, that will work perfectly. Right. And you don't have to get into the whole how many tabs do I have to have and all this other nonsense, because <clears throat> as part of, you know, when I'm working with people, one of the things I want to do right away is see their website because I want to know, OK, we're going to put this opt in video on the website. What is this opt in? What does this page look like? Most of the time, people have too much information and too many options. Right. And a confused mind says, no. If I don't have a clear direction on where I should be led, I probably just refuse to go. And if I go off of that website, then I'm never coming back, really, because there's just too many options online. That's my general thought on it. Um, so you need to have an opt-in video. The next thing you need to have is what I call a strategy session video. I believe that as a service-based entrepreneur, unless you're at a super – crazy level, you're, you're always doing one-on-one -on -one work because it will make you a better coach because you're dealing with one person at a time. The goal of that strategy session video is basically to get them on a phone call with you to see if you're a good fit. It's a no obligation type phone call, a chat. You basically, in that video, you lay down the evidence of why you might be a good resource for them. And then you ask to have a phone call by saying something like, so I want to get you started. Enter your name and email. Let's have a chat. There's no obligation. I won't run your credit card. I don't have BD powers, right? You make it something light and easy where somebody would want to reach out and talk to you. Um, and those should be no more than a half hour. You know, every once in a while somebody will come in and they're like, I'm giving an hour long. And I'm like, no. It, it, <laughs> some people are just going to get all the free coaching in 59 minutes and then tell you no. Why, you've solved their immediate problems in an hour. I really prefer 15 minutes. You know yeah. if you're a good fit or not, right? Yeah, you know, and I, I did that with my first webinar. It was one hour long, and, and it, was, yeah. it was great. I was like, oh, my God, that was really cool. And, and one of the women who watched it, she was like, that was so amazing. I got all I need. Thank you so much. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> crap. <laughs> Meanwhile, that Meanwhile, that's false belief. She didn't get all she needs. I know. You and I both know that. And a week later, she's going to be like, but what now? That's the beauty of coaching. It's all about account accountability. I've got a problem. You help me with it. Next session, 
the problem arose because I did what you asked and then there's all these different scenarios. Now there's more problems, <laughs> more problems. <laughs> That's yeah, what you want, right? Co co solution. Coaches want to solve, want to cause problems that they can solve. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, exactly. So that's another type of video. I love the webinar format. Believe me, I'm a huge fan of the webinar format. Here's why. When you do webinars, you're basically learning to speak and sell in that period. And what's great about that is it's basically free. And really what you're training for is to get on stages. And when you get on stages, you're generally... Um, having to sponsor or pay the host and offer, you know, some kind of a commission split, right? So you want to, you want to get seasoned at that. And so one of the other videos that I love to make for people is an evergreen type video that promotes that webinar. And then I'll instruct my clients, do this webinar and do it live five to eight times a year. That way you're getting good at, at practicing, going in it out loud. Even if two people are on the line, it doesn't matter. Your job is to get good at that, at that teaching plus pitching. Um, and then if you have any kind of a group program, there should be a, a professional video for that, right? Um, and that's where you, you can really – and then from there, it's anything you, you know that's going to lead to a sale should be a, a professional pre-recorded video that could always be on there that's very concise and easy to watch. Now, for live materials – we do, we do Zoom meetings all the time. Most of our delivery, as a matter of fact, for our programs is done using the Zoom format at this point. When we're selling something, we will do a live stream. So, for example, again, going back to Video for Millions, here's the exact business model we use um, or marketing model we use to fill that program. We do an opt-in landing page, and basically the promise of that video is we're going to teach you how to do videos on your own with three training videos. So then you get the three free pre-recorded training videos. And then by the third one, we basically say, hey, we want to teach you more stuff. There's still more, you know, psychology and subtleties and stuff that we can teach on video. Then we move to a live stream format where we're live streaming this to anybody that wants to, you know, basically sign up. We've got, um, uh, basically a, a keynote or PowerPoint that we're going through and teaching. We're also uh, taking live questions. And then at the end of that live stream, we're offering the program. And that's a beautiful format for any, really just about any program can be sold using that. And we do that with most of our programs with an opt-in, three teaching content videos that lead to a something live because the live is where the magic really happens when you get the interaction. And that's how we sell a lot of the programs that we sell under the Suzanne Evans coaching umbrella. Now, Facebook, of course, has offered us a brand new way to communicate. I mean, evidenced by what we're doing here today. And for me, I love what you're doing. What I instruct my clients to do is do something. Just make sure you're doing consistently. Don't show up on Tuesday and then wait three weeks and then show up on a Friday afternoon. It's hard to gather steam. And also, you've got to know, you know, these things take time. I think the, the, uh, the uh, mindset here is, well, if I do Facebook Live and only seven people watched, am I a loser? No. I mean, there's a lot going on on Facebook. Stacy just had dinner, and she's showing a picture of her lobster. It's hard to compete with that. You've got to realize Facebook Live, as great as it is, is it doesn't offer a controlled environment where you can actually capture leads, and that's one of the issues that we have with it. We use it. We love it, but it's not the only way to do live video. So I love the way you're incorporating Zoom plus Facebook Live. That's really the magic ticket for me right now. Yeah, and I'm using different platforms, too. There's BeLive.tv. You know, I've got Zoom, there's Blue Jeans, which I haven't dove into yet, but there's different platforms and I'm just trying the different ones. OBS, you know, there's so many different ways to do this. What I like about using about Zoom, that. yes, yeah. what I like about using the Zoom is like when I'm using Zoom webinar, what's that? Fire alarm. I don't know what that is. Okay, whatever. <laughs> but um, Zoom webinar is, it's cool because, no, yeah, we're okay, we're okay. <laughs> 
No, I'm not. I got this video going. We can't have a fire right now. <laughs> the content is so hot, Linda. It's setting the place of fire. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so I'm doing this Zoom webinar, which is cool because I had an opportunity to send out a registration link. And then anybody who um, registered for the webinar is, I have their email address now. So I can send that out to my list. I can send it out to Facebook. So it is a lead capture. It's a way for me to capture some um, email addresses by using Zoom webinar. And doing, then now I can stream it out to Facebook or I can stream it out to YouTube. So I have two different places I can send it. I mean, only one. You can choose one, but you have two options. And um, so I want to really quickly hear, um, Christine Robinson is, you know, on the, on the uh, Zoom webinar, and she's, I've done some work with her. She's amazing. Uh, you know, she's helped more than 420 people become number one best-selling authors. It's really amazing. Every single person she has touched, they become number one best-selling author. So she's, you've got the gold, right? But she, so she's done a lot of landing pages. And so what she says is landing pages for first meeting and sale, website for authority and for more information. So that's a good point on that. And then she loved your um, thing, you know, doing webinar, you are training for speaking and selling from the stage, which is so true. Now, I know we got, like, we're at 4.08, so we've been here for one hour, but can I just ask one more last question for you? So, um, or I'll stay on here for another two hours, but I don't know if anybody else wants to. So, uh, I want to talk about doing live events, because a lot of the people here, they might not really think that they're going to do a live event, but they might do live events later, and they just don't know it yet. Because once you become yeah. familiar with doing videos and once you become comfortable with doing videos, and like Jimbo said, you know, doing those webinars is really, it's like training you for doing live events. Now, I, even though I'm a musician, and yes, I perform, I perform behind an instrument and yeah, with yeah, a yeah. band backing me up, right? But yeah. when I speak on stage, I'm out there naked all by myself and really doing all these videos, you know, don't picture me that way. <laughs> Doing all these videos has really given me the confidence to be able to stand on stage and not shake and worry about what everybody's thinking about me and, and be able to actually deliver content that's valuable for the audience. Because that's what we're doing when we do videos, we do webinars, we speak on stage, you know, when we are speaking one-on-one -on -one with people, we're delivering valuable information, valuable content for them. So I know you guys do a lot of events and I want to, um, maybe you can share with us some really great things that you've learned that could help us save the heartache of doing some of these, because you guys do big live events, but you didn't always start, you didn't start out doing big ones, I'm assuming. And, and we still do small ones because- okay. it, it, I, I love this topic because events work and yes, it's overwhelming and yes, it's stressful, but if you are in the entrepreneurial game, live speaking plus events is, is where the true money is. I mean, we, we will go into a room like at least the Sasevich's event, let's say, and we've done this more than once, and we'll put 60 plus people into the studios at $3,900. I mean, we're talking over $200,000 grossed in 90 minutes, and, and these people have never heard of me. So the power of a live room cannot be underestimated at all. Now, that doesn't mean like you go out and this happens magically. That's not what it's about. You actually, my advice when I'm, you know, dealing with people is stay within your limits in the beginning. If you've never done it, start with like a one day event, right? And you can, shit, you can do this at like a, a, in the back of an Olive Garden restaurant or, you know, community hall or, you know, we, we had a client that uh, worked with uh, students and she would hold meetings in her living room with you know, eight to 12 parents at a time going through what she has to offer, really coming from the attitude of education, right? So the whole event model works with this basic premise of like, here's the education. 
Now I know that I've given you this education. It really is overwhelming. You can do it on your own, but what is that going to cost you both in time and money, right? And then here is an offer that will not only save you uh, time, but will help you make more money faster and easier because we've done it, right? So literally, if you can put, you know, eight people in a room on a local level, that's where you start. And events really do work. And you don't, you know, it's not that you want to, you know, get eight people in a room and try to offer them a $10,000 program. You know, for those kinds of things, it's you're going to be best served around the $2,000 range and under, right? And, and also, you're selling a program that maybe is 90 days or six months maximum. <clears throat> and then you work your way up into maybe like a full one day. We never recommend a two-day. That is not a good event model. And then you would go to a three-day event model. And the three-day is where it, you do have some financial um, investment in that three-day because at that point, you know, you should never try to do this alone. You've at least got some kind of a part-time uh, you know, event planner that understands again, like the video person, they've got to understand what you're trying to accomplish. They understand that this is, event is actually a selling event that you're going to make an offer that that room has to be somewhat controlled at, at certain points during that event. Um, and really, you know, I was talking about be the change and how I'm, you know, inviting whoever's listening to, to be my personal guest. That's where our income comes from i mean the event is content rich and you know of course more than half don't buy anything they leave there with that knowledge and the experience the networking and all of the you know things that go along with it but the people that choose to move forward with us you know those people's lives will never be the same you know what i mean it because really that's where the transformation and the learning actual starts right that's where the program actually kicks in and goes okay I mean, you can't teach somebody everything in three days. You, you can't. <laughs> That's silly to to believe and naive, actually. Um, but it's the it's the gateway to get you into something. And at the end of the day, you start with a webinar, then you get like a, a mini, maybe an afternoon, and then a full one day, and get your sea legs going right and, until you're ready to do that event. And I've seen so many people that have started in this model. It's crazy that I've seen people going from, you know, a one day event where they made, you know, $48,000, for example, and two years later having their three, having their three day event where their those three days is grossing over $700,000. Right. And this is in a two year period and it's possible. It's really, it's the commitment to do it. Right. It's the, I'm not going to quit this. <laughs> I'm going to put my bet on me rather than my job or something else, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a great point. Now, you said, um, so first I want to talk, talk about just quickly the uh, locations. So you are saying, you know, like, you can do them in a wine bar. I know some people that will do a, a live event in a wine bar and because they have a back room. So any place that has a back room, and you can get those locations for free because they want you to bring people into their, their uh, location. So there's all kinds of, there's, yeah, there's no reason not to do a live event, right? Because whatever excuse you can come up with, there's always a solution for it. So don't let whatever your reasons are that you're not doing something like this, don't let those get in your way. Ask people around you and say, hey, I want to do a live event. Here's what my fears are, because reality is just fear, get in your way. How do you think I can solve that? And come up with a solution and just do it. Put yourself out there, right? It's like, like you said, somebody's house. Yeah. Okay, maybe you don't like your house. Ask one of your neighbors, hey, I'd like to do an event here. Is it okay if I host it at your house? You know, it's like you can do something like that. Um, I know like we have a local Denny's here that has a really great back room. And I've done an event yeah. there before. I had like 50, 60 people there. I was like, that's cool, you know? <laughs> Damn. That's yeah. Because I, was, I wasn't selling anything. 
you know, that's my, I haven't been very good at selling anything yet. So that's what I'm working on now. But so, um, so Christine, oh, this is right. Christine is hiring a four bedroom Airbnb with a huge area to present and accommodations for four people. She's only going to pay $200 a night. Now she's in Australia in Adelaide. Oh, and she would love for Jimbo to do the videography for her for free, of course. So. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I threw the... about it. I don't have any kids. <laughs> and off that horse. I'll do the... <laughs> I, threw, I threw the free part in there myself, of course. <laughs> but, okay, there, and there was something, so, so two other things you said. One was one day or three day. You said you don't recommend a two day. And why is that? Because of the psychology. So here's the way a three-day works. Number one, or day number one, you're giving them all of this content, and they're actually feeling pretty good about themselves. By the morning of day two, really what is starting to sit in is this idea of like, holy shit, I can't do this alone. By day two mid-afternoon is where the offer always goes. There's a reason. Because that's where the relief comes of like, oh, there's a way to get this done, right? And then day three is a repitch of that offer and a reminder of like, listen, this is an opportunity. Where do you think you're going to be a year from now? You've tried this on your own. You know it's challenging. You know that you need the accountability and the ongoing coaching. It's here for you. What are you waiting for? That's really the idea. Plus on day three, after you close that offer, and that happens really at the first break, so around the 1030 mark, you basically put out a call to say, hey, this is the last opportunity to join us in the program. We, are, we have to get the lunch orders for the chef, and we have to know how many people are going to be there, right? And then basically what you can have then is a day three speaker. That's generally where I would come in as I do a lot of day three event speaking. And basically it's, it's always this idea of like, okay, now you've got this program, you know, one of the th things you're going to need is, is video. And here's the answer to that. And what's great about that is the day three speaker has paid you to be there and or is splitting the commission structure with you. And so that helps off, offset the event cost and or make you money, right? Depending on how good they are and how it's all structured. So a day, two days, a two day event thing, it, it won't have the time to actually get all that done. A day one thing will, because you structure a day one, almost like a mini day three, right within the sections right like this is part one here's the second and then here's the third but on a, on a day one on a one day event you really wouldn't want like if you had a guest speaker you wouldn't want them to make an offer because really that offer needs to be your offer and it needs to be somewhere I mean, you can go as high as under $5,000. I just don't, if you've not done this before, you're better off staying around the $2,000 range um, just so that it's going to help your confidence, basically. And you're going to be able to sell more at that $2,000 range than you would at the $5,000 range, most likely. Okay. Well, that's awesome. I was going to ask you about the one day. So thanks for covering that. Um, gosh. And then, so before we go to the very last question that I have, uh, you are offering today a free, uh, you're giving away today, attack of the video hacks. And um, I put a link in the chat. So you guys, he's offering this to everybody free. So go ahead and download that. And it's going to be, what, what are they going to find in the attack of the video hacks? So here, here's the, the, the pros and the cons with video. The pro is there's only so much I can teach you. The con is you need pretty much a lifetime of devotion to figure it all out, really. <laughs> so hopefully that will lead you to working with professional. But the idea behind Attack of the Video Hack is it's five video lessons. I think video one is one of the ones I'm really super proud of because one of the things I actually found out as I was working with so many entrepreneurs is they don't have, um, we call it 
a drip campaign set up. Let me explain. We call it a 21 day drip sequence. Basically, here's the idea. I come to your website, Linda. You are offering me a free gift. I enter my name and email. Do you have a structured system for the next either 7, 14, or 21 days to basically nurture me, date me, you could say, into getting me to a next, a next step? So the idea is that you get some kind of a systemized, automated way to make all that happen. In that first video, an attack of the video hack is all about that, setting up that 21 day drip sequence so that when somebody comes and signs up for your free offer, it's automated and that way it can be measured over time. If you don't have a, a, a systemized, consistent way to, of doing that, it, you can't measure the results. So that's what that's for, right? And then the, the rest of the videos are really talking about everything from uh, performance to, uh, you know, basically if what equipment not to buy. I'm, I'm really a big proponent of that. How to shoot in a room and use the lighting in a room. Like if you look over there, right? Wait, how am I going? Or like this, you would get some backlight from that window. So you would never want to shoot into the window. But instead, if I came up to the window and I held the camera right here, I'm pretty much really nicely lit because that light from the window is just soft down on me, right? As yeah. opposed to if I did this, right? The window becomes the focus, yeah. right? Rather than me. Well, what Makes about the, the reflection in your glasses? Because I see the reflection in your glasses. How does yeah. a person who wears glasses, how do they avoid that? You don't, okay. you don't obsess about it. You don't <laughs> about it. Now, what you can do is change the angle of your glasses a little bit. Oh. If they'll stay, um, and that will help. There's also non-glare uh, glass. It's not 100%, you know, it's more marketing than it is uh, <laughs> usefulness. But I, I will tell any client that's wearing glasses, don't obsess about it. If you're in a professional situation, especially in a studio, people understand that you're being lit. And if you start to pay attention to like newscasters that wear glasses or people on TV, you'll start to notice the reflection. Oh. Don't worry about it. Just focus on being good and connecting with that camera and it'll be fine. Yeah. 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 I don't wear glasses. Yeah, so that's, yeah. 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 So yeah, that's, I, I was, that's my gift uh, to your uh, yeah. people that are showing up in this video, as well as, uh, you know, being my guest at Be The Change, and you can just direct message me on Facebook for that, and I'll make sure and take care of you. Awesome. Okay, so my last question then, and then I'll let you go, I promise. Um, this has been really incredible. I've enjoyed our conversation. I, I liked your personality since the first time I saw you on a video. And really quick, I'll just share with everybody the first assignment that Jimbo had us do in the video for millions. Now, you guys are in this video challenge. And I'm having you do things, you know, just get on live in our group and, you know, talk about your favorite toy or your, your crush and stuff like that. Well, Jimbo had us to loosen us up. It's like, um, do something goofy. And so the first goofy thing he had us do was to do karaoke. And what Jimbo didn't know is that I've done karaoke a lot. <laughs> so, like I have a karaoke machine. I take it to people's houses. I've done a lot of karaoke. So I ended up um, having my band play a song and I sang for my first song. Well, you know, it's funny because I did it and and I felt a little nervous at first because I thought, what is everybody going to think about me doing this when they're all just getting started? And I thought, you know what? Screw them. I'm just going to do it yes. anyway. What about them? About you. <laughs> so I did it. And it was, you know, playing my bass guitar and I'm singing, you know, and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> we so, love that. I mean, I remember showing it to one of my editors. I was like, check this out. This is I'm famous. <laughs> well, and you know what? That, that begs a question, right? Because really the point to all of this is to stand out. And how can you stand out? Well, I have a way of standing out in, in my, like doing my birthday videos and then 
being able to play bass guitar is like something that I do different. I'm a female, I play bass guitar, that's a little bit different. And so that's one thing that I can bring to the table that makes me stand out so that I'll be noticed in a way that people at least come and say, what's she doing? What's she doing? So, yeah. yeah. So that's it. it so that's important for us. Yeah. We need to figure out like, what is your, what is your, like uh, Molly Mahoney likes to say, what's your quesadilla of awesome? <laughs> so you figure out what that is. Okay. So the last thing was that you were talking about like the one day, the three day event. We were talking about, you know, doing events when we're doing videos, all this stuff. We want to educate, educate, educate. Right. And let's, let's just really quickly, if you could talk about the value and why we want to continue to educate and don't worry about giving away too much. No. Yeah. You can't worry about giving. You listen, all of this coaching shit is easily found on Google. People sign up. One, because of the person, they're attracted. They believe this is the person that's going to take me to the next level. And two, we need accountability. We need accountability. If I'm in the middle of the problem, there's nothing better than having a community that's provided by a program to lean on during that crisis. At that time, I can't just Google my way out of it. We are human beings. We crave connection. Right? So you can give away everything and people will still pay for it because now it's going to be structured within a program that they can follow along and network with other people. Right? And really, you know, I was a, I was a sassy un, with Lisa Sasevich for two years, not because I wanted the program, but really because I realized, like, I was like, when I first saw her make her offer in 2009, I was like, holy shit, she just put like, 48 people into a program. I know half of them got to use video. They got to need video. I'm the guy. <laughs> so I used it as a way to just network, right? And it totally paid off. <laughs> it totally paid off. That's a good point because your, your audience might be in that group. Yeah. And you, and you know, they just, <laughs> you just saw them pay $8,000 for a program. So, you know, they got, they're willing to spend money on themselves to grow. Yeah. And they, you know, let's see, Christine says networking, always think who else has my audience. Yeah. See, I never really looked at it that way. So that's a good point. Like when you're looking out, it's like, who else got, who else has my audience? And, and that's a good point. So, and then you can never educate too much. And like you said, because they can, we can find every single answer to everything on the internet. But who's going to want to search Google search for hours on end when they can reach out to their community? Yeah, yeah. if you're being a good leader, a good uh, you know, coach or whatever it is, not only are you educating, you're inspiring. And I see mm -hmm. Christine just made another good point. You know, programs help avoid the overwhelm that yes. a web search would. <laughs> You'd be like, shit, where do I start? Where yeah. the program is structured, it's going to be like a coach will just tell you, go do this. Don't worry about anything else. Go do this. <laughs> and then we'll talk. <laughs> yeah. And that immediately, like you immediately felt like you're being, feel like you're being taken care of by somebody who knows what they're doing. They have the results and they've immediately removed your overwhelm, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. So awesome. So you want to tell us really, really quickly about the um, event you have coming up, Be the Change? What's that all about? It's going to change, change everybody. Yeah, this is the seventh year of Be the Change. Suzanne Evans started it seven times ago. We do it once a year. It's in Orlando. It starts next Thursday, April 28, or 27, 28, 29, three-day event, just like I've been talking about. Um, I'll be speaking on day three, <laughs> not to give anything away. We, what I love about Suzanne is she, um, her past life, she was a Broadway uh, associate producer. She talks about it being a glorified secretary, but she really understood, and, and she did shows like putting, uh, she did things like putting Usher in Chicago 
Reba McIntyre in Annie Get Your Gun. So super legit Broadway stuff. Um, and we, we like to have fun. So we really bring this whole edutainment thing to where there's uh, entertainment infused with the education, right? And, and it's just really a fun event. I mean, it's going to cover everything about where to put your marketing dollars, any questions you have about really business building is and can be answered there. And um, like I said, I'm thrilled. I mean, this is probably my, I started Be The Change in 2012. So I guess this is my fifth one. Um, and every year it's a little bit different. It's always kind of new and exciting. And it's really a place where we get to showcase our team. We've got a team of about 18 to 20 people full time in our office and it's just really a blast. I mean, it really is one of those things where it's like, this was fun and I learned a lot of stuff and met some really, Suzanne attracts a, an outside of the kind of the box type of person because she's, she's loud, she's obnoxious, she's going to drop some F-bombs from stage. And if you ever have any of this notion of I'm overweight or I'm not, you know, this enough or whatever. Suzanne is a person you can look to as inspiration because as one of her most popular uh, blog posts is called a uh, fat broken gay. And so it's kind of one of those things like, look, if I can do it, <laughs> right, you can too. And I'm going to show you the way. And people just direct message me, you know, on Facebook. I mean, this is a great place to connect, obviously. And let's be yeah. friends. Why not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not available at next weekend um, to be in Florida, but it's it's going to be an amazing event. I just know it. Uh, I went to the event you guys had last year, and and she did drop the f bomb like right off the bat. She's like, I'm going to get it out of the way. And you know, so that way everybody yeah. knew, like right up front, this is, you know, who I am. And, you know, hey, this is who I am. No apologies. Right? No apologies. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that kind of um, stuff has helped me see, you know, more of, like, I don't drop the F-bomb, but, you know, it lets yeah, me see well, to be me. Uh, right. Right. Yes, exactly. And you I know, like no that. the right way to do all of it. Yeah. And to be unapologetic. That's the thing is like, just be who you are and don't worry about what other people think because you're going to attract to you the people that are like who you're, who you're being. And that's another thing that I think is really important is if you are not being you, then you're going to attract the people that you're being like, you know, yeah. so. Yeah. And then who wants to show up not being you all the time. Yeah. And then you're like, then you're like, I don't really like the people I'm hanging out with. Well, that's because you're not being you. <laughs> it took me 54 years to discover that. <laughs> not always easy. It took me a while yeah. As well. it's, it's, yeah. So let's see. Christine says, I see. That's where I've been. Oh, see, Suzanne uh, saw you on Suzanne's. Um, Christine saw you on Suzanne's video about a year ago. And that'll be me. I'm, think, I'm hoping she met on stage. <laughs> That'll be you, Linda. Yeah, because I, yeah, I, I totally, I, I've been on stage a few times, but I totally see me running the events, you know, just like you guys are doing, because I love that. It's so much fun. There's nothing like events. Yeah. Nothing like events. Yeah. So, Jimbo, I want to thank you. It's been an hour and a half, and I know that I could go on forever with you, but, um, yeah, I know that you probably have other things to do, and my dogs are driving me crazy right now, so I better go. <laughs> but this has been awesome. A lot of... Oh, and, yeah, I really oh. appreciate it, and you know, have your people contact me. I'm here to okay, oh, see, there. <laughs> I told you, I've been muting myself because of that. So, <laughs> so we got attack of the video hacks. Um, wait, was that what it's called? Yeah, attack of the video hacks, and then also. Be the change this coming weekend. Um, reach out to Jimbo if you want to attend that, and you could go as his guest. And then, of course, as he told us straight out, they're going to hound you and hound you and hound you afterwards. So just be ready that they will be hounding you. If you say no, say no. You know, just say no. Go <laughs> away. That's right. <laughs> Okay, so everybody have a great. Oh, oh, my name is Linda West. By the way, I didn't remember to say. Yeah. 
<laughs> so this is Linda West uh, with the GSD Video Challenge. I really enjoy you know, having this interview with, with uh, Jimbo. Hey, maybe I'll bring him back in about six months. We'll talk about something totally different. Yeah. <laughs> I would love it. Yeah. And, and speaking of dogs, you, you know, you can meet uh, Faith. She's right Oh, here. my gosh. What a cutie. She doesn't make much noise. She's camera shy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen her in some of your videos. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So again, thank you so much, Jimbo. And then I will uh, see you soon, I hope. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate it. Linda. Have, Have a, a great one. Out there. You too. Thank you.